Hello everybody, good to be here. I'm Jack, CEO of Scale Labs. Scale Labs is the core team behind the Scale Network. So, excited to talk to you today. Uh, I want to start by saying thank you. It's, I think a lot of you have been here since early this morning. Um, it's uh, now uh, 4.30 in the afternoon, so it looks like everybody's awake and still very energized. So, if you're awake, give me a wave. All right, great. Okay, so let me tell you about Scale Labs, and I'll tell you about the Scale Network. So our goal is to help move the world to the decentralized cloud. So uh, Scale's been around since late 2017. We've been fortunate to be backed by some great investors who believe in this mission and vision. And we've been going to work. A lot of you haven't heard about us yet, I know. Uh, and that's because we've been heads down coding. But we've been at this for almost two years, uh, have a team of 25 people, uh, primarily all engineers and you know, build, writing software, building a network. So, um, so let's talk a little bit about why decentralization and why open networks. And uh, before I dig into the code and microservices and containers and BLS threshold signatures, et cetera, et cetera, let's talk about the why. Um, I've been doing startups since 2005, um, have seen uh, mobile grow aggressively, uh, anyone here, did you have a mobile phone in 2005? I think we called them smartphones back then. <laughs> uh, Blackberry or a Trio. Uh, but the experience wasn't great. So there were only really two applications that made any sense back then. And that was uh, email and text messaging. Uh, fast forward a few years later, 2008, all of a sudden we have 3G networks. We have much better devices with better mem memory, better power. Um, more battery life, all of a sudden we start seeing a ramp. Then we hit 4G, and shortly thereafter, there's 100 million people playing each other in real time, simultaneously around the world, playing video games against each other. So um, I also was in machine learning uh, in 2010, and saw that growth, and again, both of these very overhyped industries that um, when they hit their inflection point, really fulfilled the promise. So I feel like we're there. Um, I think 2020 is going to be the year of the DAP. Uh, I think we're going to have our first DAP with a million daily, million daily active users. Uh, but we have to get to the point where the value exceeds the friction. Right now, we've been at this place where friction is far more, is far uh, more than the value you get in return for using these applications. So, any uh, anyone else agree with me? 2020 or 2020 is the year of the DAP. Okay, a few. 2021. Okay, um, I, you know, I, see, I have the advantage, advantage of talking to developers every day. We have over 20 DAPs building on the Scale Network now. Um, have had almost 50 submissions at hackathons, and we are very close. We are very close to seeing the friction be removed, and now we need to fulfill on the business promise. So, Jeff Bezos is famous for saying your margin is my opportunity. So what that means is he was able to apply technology and optimization to bring lower cost, better service, and disrupt middlemen. What we're trying to do here is we're trying to build a democratization of business models. What that means is we're flipping business model structures on their head, and what I like to say is your margin is our opportunity. And that's what I think the power of blockchain is. So, Scale Labs is working to make this a reality. Um, in order to do that, we need to build a decentralized cloud. But it has to be performant, secure, cost competitive, and it still has to maintain its decentralization. If not, we're just moving the middleman and central authority from one to another that's um, pretending to be one. So, this is what we're building. Uh, I like, I, I know we get introduced a lot as a layer two solution. And that's because we are very focused on helping Ethereum DApps scale. But at our core, we're trying to build an elastic blockchain network. What this means is a thousand nodes in the scale network can run 8,000 independent blockchains. 10,000 nodes can run 80,000 independent blockchains. And so what this enables is a similar paradigm to what we see with normal applications or centralized applications where a developer who deploys on Amazon doesn't need to share those resources. The developer gets their own back end. And with blockchains, 
that's typically not the case because you want to have a shared public ledger. But then you have to deal with all the issues that, uh, in terms of costs and cost of storage of transactions, et cetera, when you have large public shared ledgers. So what we're doing at scale is we're building infrastructure to give people their own blockchain, to give developers their own blockchain, and allow them to integrate easily with larger main public chains like Ethereum. Eventually you will have support for Bitcoin and other networks where you can run those currencies on your scale chain in your back end. And really it's the modern decentralized cloud approach that Scale is working on. Okay, so uh, people ask us pretty frequently, why are we working on Ethereum? And it's, it's where the developers are. That's the developer ecosystem. So uh, Microsoft dominated in the 80s and then therefore after. The reason why is that they invented what is called B2D marketing, business to developer marketing. You have to make sure that you make winners out of the people that actually leverage the software. And guess what? They're on Ethereum right now. And we are very excited about supporting the Ethereum network. And I am at every single Ethereum hackathon all over the world. I go to developer events all over the world. There's amazing traction happening in Ethereum. So let's talk a little bit about blockchains and security models and, and what slows blockchains down. So if I have a network with a lot of nodes that all are sharing the same state, it's very, very secure. However, it's slow and storage is very expensive because everything must be stored across all of the nodes in the network. So how do we speed that up? Well, one, you can have less nodes, but then you give up security. So the ideal state is to have a system that can leverage randomness, rotation, and, and have the right incentive structure so that you could gather security from the broader network and be able to move that into yet get speed and efficiency and with a smaller group of nodes. So if you look at the sharding models, this is, this is essentially what they're trying to do. But they're still trying to have one large public chain. What scale is building is a network, is a, an ecosystem where you can have your own chain, you still get to gather the security from the larger group. So if there's 10,000 nodes and it's 100,000 USD equivalent peg for each node staked in, to attack the broader network would be incredibly expensive. And so the goal is to make, give uh, developers their own subset of validators in a secure fashion and be able to consistently rotate them so they're not susceptible to a Byzantine fault tolerant attack. So uh, that means when two thirds of the nodes are malicious and trying to steal the money, they could steal the money. So you prevent that by randomly assigning them to different groups and rotating them and having them stake into the system with the currency. So what you're doing is you create a network effect of security with the broader pool and then you give value and efficiency and high throughput in the smaller pool. So for example, in scale, you can run sub-second block times in a fully EVM, Ethereum compatible manner. You can do 2,000 transactions per second in a large chain. You can run full state smart contracts. You can do storage, so you don't need to go use IPFS. You can actually do storage right in the chain. And you can run machine learning models through smart contracts on a scale chain. You can also message. So each of these chains can talk to each other. And they can talk back and forth to the Ethereum mainnet. And what, they, what that means is you have interoperability and applications don't suffer and user experience doesn't suffer. So let's talk a little bit about how this works. Uh, it works via what we call, uh, well, the elastic blockchain model is really comes down to the architecture. So if you look at the scale node architecture, by the way, do we have any Docker fans out here? Any Docker fans? Okay, a few, great. So Scale leverages Docker, which is an open source software platform. And what that means is within each node or server, we can break those down into smaller compute components. And we have a lot of small computers on the scale, each scale node. What we do is every, the core works to do orchestration, auditing, and administration capabilities. It also speaks to a series of smart contracts on the Ethereum mainnet. So it's almost as if we have this brain living across the scale network 
but instead of having multiple nodes have to perform different functions, we can devote a piece of every server towards those administrative functions that again go back to randomness, rotation, and incentives, right? And, and it's also hardened from a security perspective by anchoring into the Ethereum mainnet. Okay, so now let's talk about the part of the, 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 the server that actually works on a blockchain. Those are the virtualized subnodes. So every scale node can run 128 different dApps. So it can have 60 gaming apps and 40 DeFi apps and 20 running B2B products. And every node is working across the entire network on different blockchains. Um, or those node resources could be gathered and pooled if a, if a DAP or a business wants to have a larger blockchain and more memory, more storage, higher throughput capacity. Um, or the entire node could be working for one single DAP. And so what you can see here, this is modern, just microservices and containerization approach, right? This is what we see when people deploy to Amazon. It's elastic, they can have a small one and then they get more traction, they can move up and increase their budget. They may want to have multiple series of these and have them work together. And blockchains to date have been very uniform. It's one size fits all, we all have to share them, we're all impacted when someone else is using them too much. And in this model, it's very similar to what we experience in, the, in you know, anybody who's doing DevOps at Uber or Twitter or LinkedIn, right? This is what they expect, this is what they need, and we're trying to bring in an autonomous, decentralized fashion the same type of enterprise, high quality performance that you know, we think when we move to the decentralized cloud, it's the same people that are working in IT and DevOps and these other platforms, they, they're going to need to leverage this in the decentralized world. Okay, let's talk about storage. So scale launched scale storage fairly recently. What this means is that within each scale chain, you can do storage. You don't need to move out and use another network for, uh, such as IPFS. You can actually do storage right on your chain. And it's actually affordable because the only the validators that have been randomly assigned to your scale chain are running storage for you. So you don't have to store things across the entire network. If there's 10,000 nodes in the scale network, you only need to pay to have storage on your nodes that work for you. So uh, how do we do this? So we modify EVM. So Ethereum Virtual Machine calls and does the storage uh, functions within the scale chain. And so it's connected into the smart contract it's a seamless experience, and frankly, it's just easy for developers to set up where they can access storage within their scale chain. It also enables new types of businesses to come to life. If you don't have storage decentralized, that means you can't have any front end operating in a decentralized fashion. So with scale storage, you can run a full website, game, any type of application. Uh, you could run a full decentralized exchange on scale including the, the end user interface, the, the front end. Um, you could run an entire social network. You could run Facebook entirely on the scale chain, connecting back and forth to Ethereum. Um, so we're really excited about what this enables. Uh, the last piece that it enables, which is, I, you know, I think, very new in the blockchain space is machine learning. So you can run pre-chain TensorFlow models in a scale chain. And so why would you want to do this? <laughs> By the way, we launched this last weekend at Harvard at the ETH Boston Hackathon, and it was amazing seeing people dig into this. So what you could do, you could make your smart contracts actually really smart. <laughs> so the smart contract can do fraud, fraud detection. So let's say Jack's in China, I, you know, you know, I'm sending uh, a transaction that's 10x more than the normal transaction sizes I send and from an IP address that I've never used before. Essentially, the Oracle could pull in those data points, push them through the TensorFlow model, and say, we're gonna pause that transaction until later. And then we can, then there's you know, a support mechanism to figure out what's happening. Or you could do image recognition. And one of the fears people have of decentralized entities is that they can be ungoverned. Imagine if you could create a decentralized network and then use smart contracts to enforce the rules. So uh, I like to use this one as an example. What if you had a, a nudist social network? It could ban 
any clothing <laughs> pictures. <laughs> or the opposite, right? Uh, but uh, that's kind of uh, tongue in cheek, but there's real business applications that could leverage this for price prediction and so on and so forth. And again, it, it's all about making the smart contracts and these systems more usable for the use cases that are already living today but in the centralized world. Okay, so we talked a little bit about integration to Ethereum and the layer two component of how this works. Uh, I'll address that really quickly. So scale, uh, if a developer is going to connect to scale, what they do is they have this, it's called the Web3 connector, they connect Web3 into Ethereum. And they do this all the time, it's really easy to do. And for scale, they just connect in the same exact way, but then they're connected to two places, so you're not really taking advantage of the cost savings. And so what happens is the smart contract really freezes and it locks in all of that currency. And so it could be locking a DAI, uh, it just if ETH, ERC721, ERC20, uh, etc., all in the, scale, in the scale chain. And then the scale chain is just running. And the end user, the beauty of this is that if I'm you know, playing my DAP, uh, if I'm, I'm playing a game, I don't even need to know I'm using scale, which I don't think any of us here ever know when we're interacting with Docker on our phone, right? When we're hitting you know, subcontainers, we don't, we don't care. Um, we just want to use the app. And so that's the experience we want to bring to developers that they can bring back to their end users. And then, let's say the user says, oh, I'm going to take my money out. They've been using the application every day for six months and they decide to take 10% out. Well, scale runs consensus in less than a second. It messages back the Ethereum mainnet. The, those funds then are burned. The clones are burned on the scale network. And they go right back to the end user, and the end user never knows. So that's the way that works. It's called interchange messaging. This, I will say, is one of the toughest things we built. It was, this was very hard. <laughs> this took us, we didn't think it would be that hard, but it took about four months to make it happen. Okay. Uh, another piece uh, that Scale is designing for is instant operability within the Ethereum ecosystem. The Ethereum ecosystem is very strong from, uh, from a number of perspectives. So uh, we have instant integration into EVM, and then anything that needs EVM compatibility or has EVM compatibility, compatibility has that same compatibility back to the scale network. Interoperability and composability are critical, and that's what we want to bring to the table for, for developers. Okay, uh, I'm, I'm almost out of time here. I want to give a quick update. I've gotten a lot of questions on what's the status of the project, and we are launching a mainnet later this year, okay? Um, and uh, we uh, are doing this not in an untested fashion. So we launched the testnet last year in December, and now here we are. Uh, we launched the devnet in February, and we were able to test this in, at Denver, Paris, Berlin, um, at the Israel uh, Gitcoin hackathon. We had 48 submissions over the course of the year, which is you know, a top in the entire Ethereum community. Right now there's 22 dApps building on scale. We're really excited about the different things being built from gaming, DeFi, B2B, etc. A lot of cool things being built and that will be launched later this year or early next year with these, this group of companies that are using Scale. Um, there's also 10 top tier validators running the network now. Um, Scale Labs before it was running it in a test environment, now uh, Bison Trails and uh, Staked and Stake With Us and NGC and Hashed and Chorus One uh, are a subset of uh, validators already signed up in the program. So, one of the things about proof-of-stake networks, the networks are only as strong as the validators that run those networks. So um, very fortunate to have these great uh, groups be the first wave, and more will follow. Um, I will buzz through this. So I just want to say it's been a real pleasure, and thanks for having me, and thanks all of you for staying so late and paying attention, and um, I look forward to meeting you later. You can follow me on Twitter, uh, at Jack O'Halloran, uh, we also have our Telegram, Discord, and GitHub link up, and uh, thank you. Thank you Jack.